This is June 12th through 15th of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. We begin June 12th back down at the Bay of Kapoho. The ocean entry, which has been moving to the south, is continuing to do so. As it does, it gets closer to the Kuukula Charter School, the Ahalanui Warm Pond, as well as the Poiki Boat Ramp. On the south side of the ocean entry, we see this beach that is accumulated. This beach is the sediment that is being generated from the ocean entry, all this tephra that's getting crushed down. And it's being driven primarily by the dominant currents in the area, which are pushing the sand further to the south. Packages, tents, masks, so look at that. sleeping bags, Two lights, lights, masks, light. pillows, pillows, toilet paper, basic supplies. Back up in the town of Pahoa, there are still hundreds if not thousands of people that have been displaced by the lava that need the assistance that is being provided by the community primarily in order to get through this trying time. The activity inside of Leilani Estates has been consistent over the previous days, but the county has implemented a barrier system on Pomakai Street, and in order to get past it, you're going to need an escort from the authorities into the restricted area. Here we have a thermal map produced by the USGS on June 12th. In it, it shows the expansion of the ocean entry to the south, as well as pictures 16 and 18, which have been intermittently active over the previous couple days. They're incandescent at night, and they're putting up some weak spatter, no real lava flows from them, but definitely notable. We are now into June 13th, and we are back on the ocean early in the morning, looking at the ocean entry point, with the fountain of Fisher 8 illuminating the clouds in the background. Now the ocean entry point, as we've discussed previously, is volatile. It moves north to south and buries in the exact spot that it's making the primary ocean entry. The previous day, the ocean entry was rather distributed. There were a couple different points which could be considered the primary plume. But on June 13th, we have consolidated back to a centralized point and we've reached the point in the eruption we really need to talk about the Homes Loss Map. The Homes Loss Map is a collaborative effort between Hawaii Tracker and the community to document the homes that have been lost in the 2018 eruption in near real time. The County of Hawaii has been doing their own accounting process, but it's slow. It's a week or more behind the events on the ground. So we're putting this together to fill that gap. And then on June 14th, the office of David Ige releases a map that is essentially the exact same as our map. It looks like it's just been copied and pasted into the individual assistance application to FEMA. This application was compiled by the Department of Defense and the Hawaii Emergency Management Agency for the state of Hawaii. But in doing so, they just copied and pasted our map and used it without accreditation, citation, or attribution. This was pretty shocking to see, but it was good to see that the map was being put to good use. The map appeared on the second page of the individual assistance application, and it took up essentially half of the page. This was the application that was later signed by President Donald Trump and gave the state the assistance for individuals that were affected by the 2018 eruption directly. So a few extra tidbits about the map. Originally, when we envisioned its creation, it was back in mid to late May, and we took the informal proposal to the County of Hawaii, only to never receive a response back. So we really didn't know how they felt about this mapping project that was ongoing. Fast forward a couple weeks, we start to see the press circulating our map without attribution or citation. So we reach out to them, you know, what gives? And they say, oh, it was Governor Ige that gave us the map. The governor gave you our map. Okay, so this started just a giant rabbit hole, right? It started with the phone call to the press secretary of Governor Ige that said, oh, Department of Defense gave us the map. And just the rabbit hole got deeper and deeper. Hey Mick. Yeah, I'm Facebook. Hey Boo. How's it going? We're riding with the famous Ikaik guy today. <laughs> no, I'm riding with you guys. Yeah, <laughs> Okay. It's fine. It is now June 14th. 
we joined Mick Calber and Bruce Omari in their morning overflight of the Lower East Rift Zone eruption, this time joined by Akaika Marzo. They fly over the eruptive vent of Fisher 8, which has decreased in height over the previous days. It's now down to about 100 to 130 feet. It barely gets over the cinder cone rim that has been formed around it. We move down rift a little ways into the braided channel and then down into the ocean entry, which has continued to progress further and further to the south. Here we see one more of these upwellings of water, which have been moving alongside the flow front. This is the river that is feeding the, uh, the ocean entry. So the river is approximately right here is about 40 to 50 yards wide. There's another river on the other side and it's actually combining down more down here towards the ocean. You can see Green Mountain, but the river down there looks like to be about 150 yards wide. Here we are at the Kapoho Crater. The lava channel is coming down what was Highway 132 and then bending around the crater as it makes its way into Kapoho. Now, this area is gonna become a little bit more important later, but it makes me think of something that's true for this event, as well as many of the events throughout history that we know about. It's that we today have the privilege of hindsight. We get a cheat sheet as we already know what happens, right? But when you're in that heat of the moment, when things are ongoing and you're working with partial information at best, it's entirely different. Things that get talked about back then in terms of what the eruption could become seem silly or ludicrous with that privilege of hindsight. But at the time, they didn't seem all that outlandish. Here we have another thermal map from June 14th. And it's very similar to the previous thermal maps. There has been a drop off of an activity at Fisher 16 and 18, only lightly incandescent at night by this point. But the lava channel at the ocean entry looks like it's starting to swing a little bit back to the north. As we move into June 15th, there's a question out there about is that ocean entry moving back to the north? There's been some suggestions perhaps that that might be the case, but the footage coming out that morning from the air and from the sea shows clearly that the ocean entry is still working to the south. It's still expanding the flanks of that delta and consuming land that has yet to be covered in this eruption. Now the ocean entry is able to do so, able to swing so widely, primarily because of the flat terrain. The topography out in this area has very little slope to it, and that allows this ocean entry to swing so widely. So we're now looking at the Poiki Bay, areas of Shacks, Bowls, First Bay, Second Bay, and areas that we're worried about. We don't know how far this lava flow is going to swing to the south. Will it get Poiki? That's a real question in many people's minds. The overflows of the channel walls that we've been seeing over the previous days are becoming less frequent. They're also becoming smaller in volume. So they're not getting off of the lava channel as much. That'll do it for June 12th through 15th of the 2018 Kilauea eruption. In the next episode, we're going to try and combine even more days into a single episode. Hope to see you there. Aloha.